Elena, thank you so much for joining us. Right, okay, tell us the, uh, the history of the Romania Pro. Uh, our first edition actually happened in 2018, took place in 2018. Mm -hmm. And then, um, so this is going to be our third edition. Yep. Uh, it had a huge success in that part of the uh, of Europe, in Eastern Europe, you know, and I think that... Um, it's a uh, close proximity with the um, Arabic countries, so most of the time, so you have a lot of uh, people coming from, uh, you know, the Arabic countries and mm -hmm. a lot of the European athletes as well. You know, for economical reasons, sometimes it's much cheaper to to compete in an area like that. Uh, uh, our show um, gets uh, the overall in the NPC Worldwide portion, the amateurs, they get a pro card and the winners of the pro divisions get an Olympia qualification. Uh, and we have had absolutely all the divisions um, except for last year and this year because of our venue restrictions um, on the stage, we cannot have the fitness division, which is very, very hard for us because we love the fitness division it's such a spectacular and beautiful division i would have loved to really uh, support the athletes by offering them this stage but unfortunately the structure of it i don't know if you saw it's like stag uh, it has steps on it right yeah and it will not allow them to do their routines in a safe way so except for that we had in 2018 2019 all the divisions both in amateurs and pro uh, this year we have introduced wellness and we have wellness at uh, the pro level as well. So the uh, wellness uh, competitors, the, the winner will get their pro qualification. The, sorry, the Olympia qualification. Wow. So is the wellness going to be at the Olympia in 2021? Uh, yes. Wow. Yes. I imagine since it's uh, yeah. on our stage and it makes, it produces winners and uh, you're yeah. right. <laughs> oh wow that's huge news i mean i've really because i mean the wellness has been around in the kind of european as you know in uh, some some amateur events for sort of quite a while but um to hear that it's coming over is absolutely fantastic yeah it's really exciting obviously i'm not speaking uh, in the name of the olympia even if i wear my jacket from the day back in the days when i was competing mm. um but uh it makes sense right the fact that we have it at the pro level and there were not a lot of shows a lot of pro shows that had the wellness division this year uh, this year mm. so the fact that we have it just proves that you know the winner probably will go to the olympia yeah. it's crazy crazy to think the uh, this is only the third year for the Romania Pro. I mean, even that first year in 2018, the show was, I heard nothing but good things about it. 2019, it was even bigger. So it's, uh, yeah, it's really picking up momentum, isn't it? As far as a, as a, as a huge, in, not just a European base, but an international pro event. Yes, absolutely. Um, we, we, we like to see the, you know, the, the, the show caught up really fast and uh, the, the production that we put together with Tim Garner there was uh, very much appreciated and the athletes loved it. Mm -hmm. uh, last year we moved it to this spectacular venue. It's called the Face Convention Center. Uh, and I do hope that maybe you're going to be there at one of the editions. I, I really <laughs> want to be there this year. really hope so. Eyes. We have all of those LED screens left and right everywhere. They are as big as life. Mm -hmm. And um, that gives you an immersive feeling, right? So the audience, like, and the audiences and the athletes really, really get the feeling of really a festival. It's, a, it's really a fest. <laughs> yeah. So what's, what's... It's just beautiful. Uh, we are trying... We are trying to expand in a bigger location. The same, uh, the same company is trying to build a bigger one because this is the problem that we had last year. Mm -hmm. um, we we realized that the amount of athletes and the amount of public that we attract with the show uh, is actually not going to easily fit in that location. As a matter of fact, if wow. COVID didn't happen, we were we were planning to have tents outside to expand the backstage area. <laughs> uh, Wow. Yeah, that we would have done it, but this year because we do not have the expo, mm -hmm. um, we will allow the athletes to have that area. That would have been the expo to have their backstage. Mm. Uh, tracing back a little bit, the same company is getting ready to uh, build another location on the, with the same parameters and quality and bigger. So we are hoping to be able to move that 
who is the following years over there and also welcome the fitness division too. Oh, I was, I, I was just interviewing actually a, a competitor that was uh, was quite disappointed you weren't doing fitness. And I, I remember you saying in, in an interview last year, saying that uh, the size of the stage, it wasn't suitable for fitness competitors, but it was, it was something that you really were wanting to include in the future. Yeah, absolutely. Again, as soon as we get a bigger stage and everything, you know, uh, we, we're going to have the, the fitness uh, competitors on our stage as well. Great, great. So what have the entries been like in terms of uh, across all the divisions? Um, the fee is 255 for the open class. Mm -hmm. So we're talking NPC amateur right now, NPC worldwide and 155 for novice or masters. Mm -hmm. Obviously the open classes are the ones that uh, have the pro card at stake. That's why it's more expensive. Yeah. Uh, the cheaper divisions, you know, do not offer a, 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 a pro card, but obviously it's the, the chance to be on stage and compete with a seriously elite athletes. Like last year, I was shocked because, you know, I see the shows in the United States, I see shows in Europe. And a lot of the uh, NPC competitors are basically pro material, like ready to step on stage, you know, Absolutely. and on a pro stage. Mm. They are amazing. You know? And obviously Europe is catching up a little bit, you know, uh, since the Federation just expanded there two years ago. So we're trying to get all those good athletes, you know, get them the mm. pro cards, get them to, to start playing, you know, at a higher level, a bigger level. Can you throw me any names who've thrown that hat into the ring for the pro shows? Can you repeat that, please? Can you throw me any names of anyone who's thrown their hat into the ring for the pro events? Any competitors? Well, I mean, from as far as I have seen, all I see right now is what I see on social media. You know, mm -hmm. I know that Regan Grimes is going to be there. Yep. Uh, Angel Calderon is going to be there. Awesome. As far as male bodybuilders are concerned. Um, you know, and a lot of other athletes. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. But of course, it's a, a lot of other great athletes. Yeah, but a, um, but of course, this is an opportunity and an early opportunity for the athletes to comp to uh, qualify for the twenty twenty one Olympia. Absolutely, yes. This is a great opportunity to qualify for twenty twenty one. As you know, the season in twenty twenty, the qualification season ended in uh, October eighteenth with the Chicago Pro, mm -hmm. and everything that was after is going to qualify for twenty twenty one. Um, but yeah, I think, uh, you know, we have a lot of the competitors that actually qualified at Romania Muscle Fest last year, and, uh, we are hoping that, uh, you know, they will make it, uh, in the uh, United States to compete, uh, at the Olympia. Yeah. So fantastic. So where can people get tickets? Unfortunately, due to the local COVID regulations, we are not allowed to have, uh, public. Any public? Any public. So... Oh. Uh, I'm going to run you a little bit through the Romania situation as we are facing it right now with the COVID. And I know that this is very important for a lot of people who plan to travel and athletes and so on. Romania, is, as you know, like right now, Europe is going through a little crisis again, big crisis. Things are somehow starting to shut down. We are very confident that nothing is, is going to shut down entirely like it happened in April. But what is happening is that Though private events, uh, entertainment events are not allowed in Romania, international sporting events mm -hmm. are allowed to take place without public. So it is, uh, this is our only door that is still open, our only door that we can still organize it legally and not be aware that, you know, that we're going to shut down. Mm -hmm. But we have to, of course, respect all the regulations. And one of them is no public. So I am allowed to have the athletes backstage and their coaches uh, you know, the media will be there, but other than that, the staff, obviously, other than that, I cannot have any public at all. So what about, um, what about the people who want to watch the show? What, any live stream details you can give us? Yes. We are preparing a pay-per-view right now. I'm actually, uh, these days I'm in touch with the, with the technical team and, uh, Good. we are preparing that and we're going to have it ready for everybody who wants to watch it. Oh, well, that's fantastic news because, uh, I mean, Alicante did such a great job with their, their live stream. You know, it was such a, it was so beneficial. I mean, I believe I heard that they had 20,000 people signed up to that live stream. So it, it shows that there's big audiences for these shows that, that, you know, otherwise can't, if they can't attend, they can otherwise get it on online, you know? Yes, absolutely. We are uh, actually in touch with the same team that did uh, Emilio Martinez, the uh, Europa Pro show. Good. So good. the quality will be good and everything will be there. You know, um, they were actually surprised because uh, 
this particular team was not um, aware that actually bodybuilding has such a big following. So they didn't <laughs> expect as many people. So they say like the live transmission started and then our server didn't have enough capacity. So they had to adjust <laughs> really quick to, to actually be able to, you know, have all the uh, bandwidth for, for the live tr video transmission. So we are very happy from, uh, from that perspective. And um, if you allow me, I would also like to um, 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 discuss a little bit uh, what are the regulations to enter in the country in Romania. Because as you know, every country, the rules are no more uniform. So every country is different. So first of all, Romania has a blacklist of countries. Okay. And every country in the world is on that blacklist unless it's the European Union, uh, Norway, Iceland, Liechtenstein or Switzerland. Uh, European Union and these countries that I just mentioned, they can come in the country with no explanation. They are going to be let in. Everybody else is on a blacklist. Wow. This means that I have to write an invitation, a letter of invitation for every athlete and every media or official that does not come from these countries. So mm -hmm. the blacklist they need to reach out to me. We've been emailing and we've been uh, yeah, email blasting and reaching out on social media and telling the athletes that they need to get back to us for that letter. Based on this letter, they're going to be let in the country, right? So this is the black list. Now there is another list, which is the yellow list. The yellow <laughs> list are all the countries. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the yellow list are all the countries that have higher COVID infection numbers than Romania. They are about 30 right now on that list. Well, these people that come from these countries, they have three options. Come in the country and quarantine for 14 days. Come in the country, quarantine for eight days, then take a test. If it comes out negative on the 10th day, they can come out. The third option, which most of the people will do, come with a negative COVID test, which would be done 48 hours before leaving their country and stay in Romania only 72 hours. This is the exception, so they don't have to quarantine. Okay. Right? So all of the athletes that come from outside the European Union, there are not a whole lot of them, but the Arabic countries, for example, are, right? So they need to observe. Uh, they need to come with my letter, and then if they are on the yellow list, they need to observe the 72 hour. Okay. Well... I think full credit has to go to you and your team because, I mean, to be able to pull this show off and not postpone or cancel entirely, I think that's really, uh, it's, a, it's, um, it's, it's full credit to you guys for, you know, carrying on with it and uh, making sure that the show keeps growing and keeps on prospering, you know, because um, I, think it's, uh, I think it's very, very impressive, you, you know, you, you're taking these steps to make sure that everyone's safe, that the event can go ahead. And that people Absolutely. can, you know, and also that people can still see it on things like a good quality live stream as well. So, yeah, fantastic. Thank you. Absolutely. We are, uh, we don't really give up that easy. Uh, my boss and the owner of Wings of Strength, Jake Wood, said, mm -hmm. we are not going to give up without a fight. <laughs> so I, I got on the same uh, line with him and I said, you know what? Unless there is absolutely no way that I can do it, I'm not going to be discouraged by the hardships. And mm -hmm. I know that a lot of the European athletes, they, uh, they couldn't come in the United States to compete, right? There were some shows happening in the United States. Yeah. Now, recently, they're opened a couple of them in Europe. But I knew that a lot of these European athletes couldn't compete and they have prepped all year long. So I said, I cannot let them, you know, hanging. And I'm going to try absolutely everything I can. Mm -hmm. Unless the government tells me you can have this, I'll find a way. So this window we have right now and we're writing it. <laughs> yeah. And we just pray that, you know, uh, I want to be prepared. I'm, uh, whoever writes me, I'm telling them about all the papers, every little paper, even the pro card, even the NPC registration. If you come from the blacklist country, put it in a file, bring it to you at the borders, show it to the officers. They're going to let you in. If you come from the infected, higher infection countries than Romania, plan your stay for 72 hours, show the police officer your flight that you return without 72 hour, within 72 hours. You're not going to have to quarantine, come in, compete, and get out. As a matter of fact, we had to do a change because of that. Uh, you know how usually we have the registrations on, for both amateurs and professionals on Friday? Yep. Amateurs compete on Saturday, amateur uh, professionals compete on Sunday. So because of that, the professional athletes wouldn't have had time to get out, to get in and get out of the country in a good enough time. So 
we are checking in the amateurs on Friday and we are checking in the professionals on Saturday. So that gives them a little bit more time to fit in those 72 hours in case they come from the higher infection rate than Romania countries. Well, Alina, I hope you get uh, the kind of same kind of support you got for the they, they got for the Alicante Pro because I think you know you guys deserve to have that uh, have the support from the fans and the spec you know the people that otherwise, like I said, would want to be there. So, Alina Popper, yeah, thank you so much for joining us for the Pro League hype show, and uh, yeah, really looking forward to uh, watching the live stream of the Romania Pro twenty twenty. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Uh, and uh, I want to give a shout out to all of my team and all of those athletes out there. And I want to thank you all for your uh, perseverance and for fighting hard. We are fighting next to you and we are all in this together. So let's pull this through. We're all in this together, guys.